Okay, so as you can already hear, the sound on Civilization 2 is much more sophisticated than on Civilization 1. And we have started a pre-made world, which means something built by you. Customize world. See, that's see pretty much a map editor. It is more sophisticated than the original Civilization, that's for certain. You can begin a scenario that you've set up in a similar manner. Load a saved game. There's a multiplayer function that I mentioned earlier. And the Hall of Fame, the credits. And then you can just start a new game in the tra traditional manner. I'm actually going to start a new game in the traditional manner in order to demonstrate the interface. So we'll go with a large map, the most basic skill level, Chieftain, seven civilizations. They let you select the amount of barbarian activity. Villages only gives you a low score. Roving bands is a little bit closer to the original civilization. Restless Tribes, well, that's a lot more. Raging Hordes makes it actually difficult to play the game and can improve your score. I'm going to go with Roving Bands. So you can customize the rules if you want. I'm not going to. Male or female, that's something new. And then you have all the different nations. The custom function is right there, and as I've mentioned, later releases of the original Civilization also had this. But this was standard in Civilization 2. We'll stick with the Romans for now. Caesar, Julius Caesar. He's your default Roman Emperor, but of course you could put in any number of them just by typing it in. And you can choose your architecture style. This will be maintained until industrialization. And then you'll have generic, basically American buildings of the Industrial Revolution, and then generic modern skyscrapers and so on when you develop electronics. So, Caesar, you have risen to become leader of the Romans. May your reign be long and prosperous. The Romans have knowledge of irrigation, mining, alphabet, browns, working, ceremonial burial, and roads. So this is an example of one of the features you could also find in the original civilization, where you get some extra technologies to start with, aside from mining, irrigation, and roads. And the music is stopped. Now, you have the option of continuing the music during gameplay. I'll find the settings here. As you can see, these men menus are much, much deeper than previously. And you can get a casualty timeline. See, I mentioned in the original Civilization, you don't have that. This is pretty much the same Civilization score, top five cities, wonders, demographics, and spaceships. You also get cheat mode. Cheat mode could also be for building scenarios because you can see all of these are applicable to that. And that's how you generally build scenarios without a specialized editor for Civilization 2. Sid Meier was a little bit off-put by this, allegedly, when it was originally introduced because it seemed to go against his idea of a challenging game. Although, as I said, it's useful as a scenario editor, and if you're a 13-year-old who just likes to blow stuff up, it can give you a modern military against spearmen, if that's your thing. We're not going to do that today. Then this is a editor on top of the cheat mode for toggling the scenario flag and so on, so that it can be loaded as a scenario. And you get some other features there, if you notice. Now, Civilopedia is now split into categories of things you can look up. 
So if we were to look up military units, for example, they have this nice graphical user interface, which is arguably far nicer than what you could get before. And you notice there are a lot of units that are not in the original civilization. So, for example, the destroyer, the Aegis missile cruiser, which is, I think, equivalent to an independence class. I could be wrong about that. And what else do you have? Well, Crusaders. Crusaders are not the, in, in the original civilization. Cruise missile is also not in the original civilization. This artillery is a step up from the original cannon, whereas in the original civilization, artillery is more equivalent to modern artillery. But modern artillery in Civilization 2 is the howitzer, right there. You can also get fanatics, although only if you have a fundamentalist regime. And you can get marines for amphibious warfare. And amphibious warfare is one of the civilization advances. And dragoons, which are basically cavalry armed with black powder weapons. And if you jump back to the cavalry here, the cavalry are actually smokeless powder, or maybe late black powder era mounted cavalry, unlike in the original when they were basically your current mounted unit at the beginning of the game, as soon as you develop horseback riding, so crude spears and so on. In Civilization II, the equivalent would be the horsemen there. Because in the original Civilization, the best mounted unit you could get were knights, which are kept. And you can get pikemen once you develop feudalism, I believe. So they're useful against mounted units. There's the partisans that I mentioned in the playthrough for Civilization 1. So they're basically guerrilla fighters that can ignore zones of control. And you get paratroopers, which you can paradrop from cities with airports. More on that in a minute. The spy, which is essentially an upgraded diplomat. There are the stealth aircraft I mentioned earlier. The warriors are equivalent to the militia in the original civilization because you don't have the militia in Civilization 2. And you have alpine troops that can deal with rougher terrain than regular riflemen. So essentially they are able to go three spaces a lot of the time, whereas a rifleman can only go one space in a turn. And you have archers too, which are an alternative to phalanxes basically. They have a better attack, but are not as powerful as a legion. And to get them, you need the warrior code advance. 